Good afternoon, Martin. Sometime since we've spoken, so uh, like to wish you good luck on Saturday. But uh, it looks a really difficult task for you. What's your view? Well, difficult fights, like like all my big fights. Um, Billy Joe offers me something different, kind of similar to what I experienced with Martinez, but obviously he's a bit younger, a bit slick, a uh, bit slicker. Um, I'm a bit older. So it's it's going to be a difficult fight, you know. It's um, it, it's a fight to train for, so I'm ready for it. But I, I'm expecting a hard fight. But I'm I'm, I'm confident. It's um, you know I think everything happens for a reason, and you know all, all the little setbacks I've had in the past have been building to this. And yeah, I'm ready for it, and I really do feel like it's my time. I mean, you're 38; he's 31. Do you think that age difference is important? Well, no, to be honest, I don't. I mean, I look after myself, you know, in between fights. It's not like I go blowing up in weight. Um, you know, I do a lot of training, eat, eat healthy. So even though I'm, I'm 38, I'm a young 38, you know, I've not been in many hard fights. Um, but having said that, neither is he, you know, but he, he doesn't really look after himself in between fights. So, um you know, it's not like I'm looking, thinking that, well, I'm, I'm 38 and too old, I'm past it. I know I'm not. I know what I've got in men and what's left, and I know that there's a big fight and definitely a big win in me. It's your sixth attempt at a world title. Um, you've gone the distance with quite a few of them. In fact, all of them apart from the draw. So you've lost four and drawn um, one. Yeah. Um, so you stay the distance, but he's 29 and 0, and it's his seventh world title fight. So you can understand people thinking that Billy Joe's going to win this. Oh, but listen, it's a win-win for me. I mean, everybody's written me off, so it, you know it, it doesn't doesn't matter. There's no there's no pressure on me uh, on me. It's um, it's one of them where everybody's written me off, but I know that I rise to the big occasions in the big fights. You know, you you you, you see the best of me and. Fair enough, I've I've fought for, you know, this is my fifth world title fight and he might have defended it seven times, but he's not fought the opposition he, I've had. And, and even so, you know, if I'd have fought the people he'd have fought for world titles, I'd have been world champion, had many more defences. So it's, you know, I, I'm not kind of looking, I'm not looking into it like that. And, and like I keep saying, I know it's an hard fight and I've trained for it, so I'm ready. You're talking about Golovkin and Felix Sturm and those sort of people that you fought. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I mean, I've been in... No, I've, I've done it the hard way. I've not got there. You know, Sturm, Martinez, Abraham. Obviously, I think Golovkin was the only one where it, it you know, it, it won. It won in doubt. The other three, the other three are. So, you know, it's, uh, I've been in with better better opposition. Um, I've done it the hard way, but not got there. I should have been world champion, but I'm not. He's done it the easy way and, and got there, but... It's uh, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and you know what? I'm you've ready. Had, I'm ready. You've had a lo you've had a long career, thirty eight fights. Uh, sorry, thirty nine, five, thirty nine wins, five losses, and one draw. Is this a, a make or break fight for you at your age now? Do you think, Martin? Is everything on the line here? Um, you know what? I've been, I've been it past like people. People have said that for me for so long, and and I I used. I, I used to say, yeah, I go, you know what it is. And then I, I obviously had that little um, little blip against end of 2018 against Indam. And it wasn't, you know, I had an off night, but I still thought I won the fight, especially at home. And, you know, I was like, I was thinking, you know what, I'm done. And then last year I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it for the love of it because I still feel like I've got something to give. And, you know, we had two fights. They weren't major, major fights. There was nothing I needed to bring out my A game for. I was levels above and you know what? I, I enjoyed him and obviously this fight, this this has been a shocking, shocking year for everyone really but you know, this fight's come up and you know what? I, I, I'm at the stage now where I'm, you know what? I, I'm doing it because I enjoy it and I'll do it. There's no point me saying, oh, well, if, if I get beat, I'll, I'll, I'll retire because to be honest, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, one breath, I'll be like, oh, well, you know, one more fight and then a done win, lose or draw. And then in the next breath, I'm thinking, 
you know, I could be fighting like Bernard Hopkins selling fifth, do you know what I mean? I, I really, I really don't know. I'm just taking it, taking it as it comes and just, just enjoying it. You're the wrong weight for Mike Tyson, but let me just ask a few more questions here. Um, what sort of fight can we expect with Styles here? Well, I mean, like you know, Billy Joe is like I've said, he's, he's very slick. He's a southpaw, which always makes it awkward. But I've never really struggled with southpaws, to be honest with you. I've not fought many, but I've always done okay. Um, you know, he's Billy Joe likes everything his own his own way. Um, so it's about me not being able to give, give it him. You know, get, give it to him where everything's everything's you know on his terms and he, and, he, and he finds a rhythm. I've got to take him out of his rhythm. I, I've got to be on him. I've got to be working him. I've got to take him out of his comfort zone. Um, but, I'm, you know, I, I know what I need to do, but, you know, he'll be, think, he'll be training for the exact same thing. So I know that he's ready. I know that he's fit. And, you know, I think I'm just going to have to play it by ear with, with a fight. You know, sometimes you can try all... All, all training camp for tactics. You know, we tried it in, in in this training camp, and you know, we thought, right, we'll we'll try it this way, and we thought it'd work, but we got in against Southpaw sparring partners, and it didn't. And you know, which one of them? I might I might get in there on, on Friday, and the things that I thought had worked don't, and the things that I thought might not work work. You know what I mean? It's just one of them. I'm experiencing experiencing intelligence intelligence enough now to um, you know go out there and. And, and just do the job and deal with whatever I need to deal with. Do you think the lack of crowds going to affect you? Do you thrive on crowds? Billy Joe says it doesn't make any difference to him. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference to me. Um, you know, for, for many years now, go, I mean, go, going back in day, you know, when we used to be at Oliver's gym and we used to have a serious spa, there was literally no one in the gym and what went on in the gym stayed in the gym. So, you know, I'm I'm used to them type of environments, and I mean, um, yeah. It, it, to be honest, with you, every time I've, I've I've fought for a world title, the crowd's been against me. So, um, you know, I'm fighting for a world title, and and, and there's no crowd um, for me or against me. It, it makes no odds. You know, I've I've just got a job. I know what I need to do, and I'm focused on that. Does the uh, Joe Joyce win over Dubois? Fill you with a bit extra confidence. I mean, he was three to one outsider, amazingly. Yeah, you know, I was quite surprised at that. We was on about it in the gym the, the other day, um, and he was just all having a chat about who he thinks is going to win. And I, I, you know, I was quite surprised when they said he was, um, you know, he wasn't he wasn't the favourite to be honest. With you. So I wasn't surprised by the win, but um, no, I don't, to be honest, with you, I don't look, I don't look into. Anything as inspiration or motivation apart from what I what I need to do myself. You know, I've got my own things inside me that motivate and inspire me. So obviously I'm not I'm not phased by that, but um well done to Joe Joyce anyway. Final question from me. Um Billy Joe's been talking about training on sex. I don't want to be too personal, but um are you in that category? Training on what? Sex, S-E-X. You know, oh, sorry. It's, it's all right. Um, I'll ask you that again. Um, Billy Joe says he's been training with a lot of sex. I don't right. want to be too personal, but, I mean, where do you stand in those stakes? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He, he must need the training. Um, I, don't, I, don't know what that, I don't know what that's about. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I, I've, not, I've, not, I've not really got a comment for that, to be honest. Oh. Good judge. Listen, good luck. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens, and, and uh, I'm going to let somebody else ask questions. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Nice talking to you. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Harry, if we go to Luke Reddy from the BBC next, please. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? How are you, mate? You all right? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm in sunny St. Helens. Hey, what about? Uh, near the linkway. It's raining. Anyway. Uh, we won't bore everyone with that. Um, yeah, a lot of people are talking about your age, but Billy Joe is now past 30. And I mean, now looking at his record, he's only had two fights in virtually two years. Do you think yeah. people overlook like his potential 
you know, the rustiness or, you know, maybe losing the sharp edges that, that he might have had a few years ago? Um, no, to be honest with you, I, I can't really look into I can't really look into Billy Joe's age and, and, and think about like that when I'm I'm years in front of him. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. So I can't really look at him look at him like that. Um, but I know he's been inactive. He, he's not fought. I think I've fought more, been in more in more fights in the past three years. Um, but yeah, I mean. Whether the inactivity is going to play a part, I, I'm not really looking into that. I look at him, you know, his career defining performance for me was when he fought the Mew. Mm. Um, you, you know, he, he obviously trained hard for that. He knew he was up for a, in for an hard fight and he trained well for it and you got the best out of him. And, and I think that's what he's done for this. You know, he's, um, he's trained hard. He knows that he's going to have to bring his A game because I'll be bringing man. But you know, I, I'm 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 not Lemieux. You know, um, Lemieux was a one trick pony really. With you know, just just punch power. You know, mm -hmm. can't really box quite flat footed. Um, extreme power light, but loading up and looking for it. And and Billy, Billy Joe shining that fight. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm not Lemieux. I'm, I'm more versatile. I've got more to my game. Um, so, you know, we, even though we trained trained hard and, and got ready and put in a performance like that for that fight, you know, we, he's not going to do it in this fight. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm expecting him at, at, at his best on It's how I train for him. We interviewed um, Joe Joyce earlier on and he used a line where he said, he almost like, forget about all the other fights. I just want a world title. I just want a world title. And he, he was emphatic and, you know, his, you could see how much yeah. it meant to him. Yeah. Obviously, the close calls you've had. Can you explain to us, like, if you had to stop tomorrow, would you forever wrestle with it? Does it like? No. No. No, it doesn't. You know, I've I've never been wanted to dwell on things, especially them. You know, in hindsight, I I, I was set up to fail. I think the only fair one really was was he, he, I said fair. It was my toughest fight was Golovkin. You know, I fought him in his prime in February 2015 and, you know, he, he was flying then. Um, but you look at Martinez, you know, I think it was the 20th anniversary of of uh, the Falklands War in Buenos Aires. I fought him there. Uh, you know, uh, Sturm, um, Abraham in Germany. Mm. But, but, <laughs> but, you know, it's... Um, what did you ask me now? I forgot. I was getting Could you, will you forever wrestle? I, I mean, you've had, you've had a tough round there, the way you, you know, it's incredible when you look back. I've never really, I've never really dwelled on them. You know, I've, I've never really dwelled on the fights. They just, what they was what they was, but, you know, I, I've always, I've always believed I'll get there, you know, so every, every failure, don't get me wrong, it, 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 it was hard. I think Abram, Abram was a tough one for me, which was my last one in 2015. Um, because, yeah, it took me a while from that. It, it, you know, it, it, yeah, it was an hard one for me, that really, because I, I kind of thought, well, you know what, will I, will I get another chance? And, you know, I, I thought I'd, you know, I thought I'd, I thought I'd shared it, but having said that, I left it too close to call in Germany. Um, you know, we'll look back now and, and that's what I think of that fight. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of, I was obsessed. I had an unhealthy obsession with winning a world title. And, mm. you know, I, I was, obs no one's ever won a world title from St. Helens. I obviously want to be world champion. I want to be world champion for myself. I want to be world champion for Oliver. Um, I want to do it for my family and for St. Helens. Like I said, they'd never been, they'd never been a world champion uh, from St. Helens. So, you know, I was focused on that and I look back now, you know, I've, I train a lot smarter now and obviously you've got to do with age, but I look back and I realise how much of an unhealthy obsession I had with winning a world title. Um, so, you know, I, going back to that, what you said with, with, with George Joyce, I can, you know, I can really relate to it, really yeah. relate to it. Um, but now, for me, um you know, I'm, I'm I'm just a lot more relaxed about the whole situation. I've been I've been there before. I've done it, but 
you know, like I said, I've I've all, I've always believed in myself. You know, no one's ever done it in four four times. You know, I think it was Frank Bruno, George Groves in four. No one's any, ever ever done it in five. And I just really feel like, you know, picking myself up off the couch sometimes when I've just once you know gone in my car and and I just want to get to the gym because I knew when when I got to the gym I'd be all right. But I was mm. struggling getting there. You know, I I know that it's been for a reason. And I, I'm Friday. I'm, I'm going to prove that. I really do feel like it's my time and um, yeah, I can't, I can't wait for it. Just one last one from me, if Dan doesn't mind. I was at the press conference, I think it was the first time you were meant to fight Billy Joe and you came out with a really good, a really like kind of emotive answer where you said, oh, after boxing, you had no plan. You didn't know what you were going to do and you really did sound like the, the, the sportsman who was contemplating all the things that come with change you know at, at the end of a career I just wondered where you are now in that journey because it, it's a, it's always interesting when a sportsman goes into almost real real life you know yeah I mean to be honest with you you know it's always been the same I've said I've, I've had an unhealthy obsession with, with, with winning the world title and train I use train religiously and still do but my main focus has always been on my family always my family and you know I've I've always known that after boxing they're always going to be there so um, you know, I'm, I, I live my life for my family and regard, regarding what I'm going to do when I retire, whenever that may be, again, I, I've not really, I've not really put much thought into it, to be honest with you. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not really stressing about, about, you know, about trying to plan something. I'm just, I'm just taking each day as it comes. Um, I've got my family there and, you know, I've, I've got, fair enough, I might not everything, uh, might not have everything I want, but I've got everything I need and I think, that's what's important, you know what I mean? Just knowing and appreciating um, and just having gratitude for what I've got, which I have. Thank you, Martin. Good luck on Friday. Cheers, pal. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. If we go to Andy from Boxing Social. Hi, Martin. How you doing? How you, mate? You all right? I'm all good. I'm all good. Um, we did an interview. It was about two or three months into lockdown. We did it over Zoom and you spoke about what you still wanted yeah. to you spoke about what you still wanted to do, achieve in the sport. And you said at the time you was looking at, you know, you'd like to fight for a European title and you'd like to fight in America once more. Given the circumstances, could you ever, ever imagine that it would have ended up being another chance to fight Billy Joe after the two previous cancellations yeah. behind closed doors, staying in the same hotel as him for a week, not being able to go outside? Would you ever imagine he would have actually felt like this? Mate, you know what? It, it's mad. It's mad. I mean, starting this year, you're... You know, I, I, I started 2020 training flat out because I was told they had a fight in America, uh, like like we said about the European title. And then all, all this happened. And, you know, a couple of months ago, I remember just thinking, you know what, it, it, it's time now. You know, uh, you know, it's kind of ruined ruined a lot of people's lives, this, this COVID. And I thought, you know, it's ruined my career. And I really just thought that, you know, I, I I might end up calling it a day uh, because of it, because I was looking. You know, when's bo- when's boxing going to start? It's going to be 2021. I'll be, you know, I'll be I'll be a year or two older. Um, yeah, and I just thought my, my career, you know, it couldn't finish my career. But like I said in that er- earlier question, then um, you know, I've I've all, I've always believed in myself. There's always been hope there, you know, and. It's it's um it's one of them where you, you know I, I thought I, th- I thought that it was going to finish my career and it's going to end up making it and I and I truly believe that I truly believe leave everything happens for a reason and yeah I you know it'd be nice to finish the year on an eye on a positive and and obviously my career you know what I mean I've worked so hard for a world title um you know there's been some lonely. I've been in some lonely places at times, but like I've just said, I've always believed, and um, yeah, I'd have never have thought it, but but here we are. How do you find kind of the circumstances of being in the same hotel as Billy Joe for the entire week? We know he's a character. Um, I imagine he'll be trying to get up to one or two various things. You know, a, a funny person at that. How do you feel about it? <laughs> Mate, it, it makes no odds to me. He could be sharing a sharing a bunk bed with me. <laughs> doesn't uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to be honest with you, mate. Um, don't look into much too much like that. 
Um, yeah, we, you know, we're just gonna fight. we're gonna weigh in Thursday and fight on Friday. You know, I, I've got nothing against him before. I'll have nothing against him after. It's just one of them things. It's just business. Two more questions from me, Martin. Um, you mentioned you don't have anything against him, but is there any sense of frustration because of the fact that he, the fight had been slated twice before and been cancelled? Is there any frustration that you feel going into Friday night? Obviously, th- th- there was at the time, but, you know, it's one of them. It's Everything happens for a reason. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm over it. You know, I was, I was, obviously, I was pissed off at the time. I was frustrated, obviously, because I'd gone through two training camps um, time away from my family and to to be let down you know on the second time you know it, it was it was hard and obviously I, I was frustrated but you know you know as, as quick as it come it, it went I, I don't hold out against anybody um, so going into Friday you know there won't there won't be really any 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 frustrations at all. I'm just happy I'm just happy that, that we're here and it's finally happening so I'm looking forward to it and I'm ready. Final thing from me, Martin. I spoke to Jamie, who's about a month ago, and he said you'd actually sent him a message to send around to anybody who was going to ask to do an interview because you just yeah. wanted to focus on camp. You didn't want to speak to anyone. You just wanted to be staying in the zone. Yeah. Have you noticed any difference in your own mentality going into Friday night with kind of that type of thing in mind? Or is this just kind of how you've always looked at things? No, it's not how it's not how I've always looked at things. To be honest, yeah. I mean, you know, there's um, I, I, well, I, I, yeah. Here's an example, yeah. I, I, and the, the for the reason why I did it and why I'm happy that I, I decided to do that I was in the gym the other uh, last week, week before, a couple of weeks ago, anyway. And there was a well-known boxing reporter who was in the gym. And bear in mind, he, 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 I'd seen him many times over the past year in the gym, but he had nothing to speak to me about because I didn't have a big fight. And he asked me would I do an interview and I've just been knocking people back. And I went, yeah, I'll talk to you, mate. I said, but I don't want to talk about the fight. And he said, well, what are we going to talk about then? And I said, you can ask me anything. He went, well, I've got no tax yet. And, and you know what? It made me... I was so happy with the decision I made because that just hit the nail on the head. Do you know what I mean? Just listen, boxing is boxing, and and I, I understand I, I understand the score, but I was just at the stage where for this camp, I've wanted focus on training, which I've always done anyway. But I'd, I'd, I'd spoke about I'd spoke about the Billy Joe fight for, for for years previously. But no one's been in, no one's been involved with me. Obviously, I spoke to you over the over lockdown, but no one's really been messaging me, asking me for interviews, and all of a sudden they do. And I just think, you know, sometimes you just think, you know, I've done it so many times where I've done it just to please people, and I just think I'm just going to please myself. So I've just been, I've just been knocking them back, and that's the way it is. No, that's fair enough, Martin. But does that mean if I had got in touch, you would have done something with me? If what? If I'd have got in touch, would you have done something with me? Oh, no, because listen, I sent that, I sent that message, Jamie, and I went, listen, Jay, just just send that to, to anyone, really. Um, just send it to anybody. So it was not nothing personal, and it, and it wasn't, but I just wanted to do it for myself as, as well as that little point you just, uh, just said then. So, that's, yeah. That's fair enough. And completely it's nothing personal, mate. It's a pleasure talking to you now. <laughs> Martin, listen, best of luck for Friday night, and I'll speak to you soon. All right, now it's on, mate. Take it easy. Right. Cheers, mate. Ta-ra. Thanks, Andy. If you go to Ron Lewis next, please. Hi, Martin. You good? You're doing well? You're looking well. Like, right, in mate. like in the bid. Um, with, um, after the Ndam fight, the Ndam fight kind of felt like, you know, almost it'll be the end. Yeah. Was, it, was it close to being the end? And what was oh, it that no. made you? What was it made you get? Because it was just for Christmas as well. So you must have gone yeah, away no, and had Christmas on. on the back of the defeat. You know what, Ron? It was. Uh, it's like because for that fight, that that day, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd booked to go on a cruise in um, Asia eighteen months before, and it turned out that the day I was fighting in Dam was the day I was meant to be going the cruise. So anyway, cut a long story short. It was twenty second of December. Um, cut a long story short, me missus or my family, they all went over to. Um, 
to Asia, flew to Hong Kong, and then I couldn't go. I had to fight. Um, obviously, did I had an off night, fair enough, but I still thought I won the fight, especially at home. And then, you know, I, I, I got a flight the next day. I had to go to... I ended up in Hanoi, which was Vietnam. And, you know, I only seen my kids and my wife and my family on Christmas Day. And then, you know, I ended up getting a water infection on, on New Year's Eve. I, w- I was bad. I was, I, was, I was in the hospital on the boat. And, you know, I, I just thought, I just thought, you know what? I, I, I graft and I, I, I do everything. You know, I don't, I, I don't cut corners. I never have. You know, and, and, you know, you say you only get out what you put in. And then I just, you know, I thought, you know what? It's not always true that, you know, sometimes you don't get out what you put in. And I just thought, you know what? I've had enough. I, I, I don't deserve, you know, things like this happening to me. And I start, I come back and then I've not seen Jamie since the fight. And, you know, it's um, Jamie come round hours and we just sat down. We had a brew, we had a chat and it was like, what are we going to do? And, uh, I just said, Jay, I don't know. So anyway, I started personal training and by personal training, I got the love of it back. You know, I, I did. I started like kept trying to teach people kind of give me the love for boxing again. And so I went to the gym and then I thought, we'll just take a fight at a time. And then a fight come up and then another. And then you know, I thought, me and Jay were talking and Nigel was like, you know what, there's there's a big fight in me here. And we still, you know, we, we're still delivering in the gym. We thought, yeah, we, we can still do this. So... Obviously, we've uh, we've just been working, and this year's like I said, it, it's been one of them years. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd have never thought that I was here, but I've always believed in. There I am. I mean, you got a bad habit of booking uh, holidays, which get end up clashing with fights. That was your wedding as well, oh, wasn't it? What it is, honestly, that's what we, that's what my missy said to me. She went, "You need to stop booking holidays, or, or when I've not got a not when I've not got a fight, you like booking all this, so then you'll get a fight." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, just unlucky, mate. But everything happens for a reason, don't it? Um, obviously, you, you planned for Billy Joe twice before. Was there always something in him you saw you could beat? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there is. And, and like I've said, and I know I'm in for an hard fight, um, but he's never fought anybody. I don't think you know he's never fought anybody uh, like me. He's not fought the opposition who I've fought. Um, and I've always felt I could beat him, yeah, of course. But I've, you know, in the same breath, it's an hard fight, and you know, I like challenges. I've always wanted to test myself against the best, and he's one of the best in his world champion. So it's, um, you know, it's yeah, it, it's it, it, it's going to be an hard fight, but but I'm ready for it, and I I do feel I can win. I know I can win. I know I can. Have you ever turned down a fight? Obviously, you went to Germany twice. You went to, um, uh, you no. were going to go to America. You took on uh, in Monaco. You went to Argentina. You know, yeah. have you ever turned, said no? Never I don't fancy that. Mate. Never. <laughs> but you know, I've never done that. But you know, you, you, this is why this is why fighters out there they need good trainers. Um, they need good managers because obviously um, they're the ones who turn this fight down or turn that fight down or whatever. But, you, you know, you you offered me anybody with the right money, I'd fight him. It's as simple as that. Excellent. Take care. Take care, Martin. Speak Thanks, to you. I'll look after yourself, mate.